edition of DKO's Dems Fighting Boys. I'm Chris Lotus, joined along with the Slickin' Hawk, DKO Scar. Back after a long time. I missed the last episode. Sorry, guys, but, you know, had some things to take care of. But I'm back, so we're gonna make it happen. And, of course, you know, yours truly, Keo the Curly Wolf Man. So, how y'all doing? I'm, I'm, I'm copacetic. I'm doing pretty good myself, man. <clears throat> got a lot of schoolwork to catch up with, but now that we got that done, we can talk about some fight words. So what uh, we got? What's uh, the what's, this what's the agenda let's, today, Joe? Let's go over here bouncing like there's something on his mind. So no, I'm more. actually trying to get Justin in this seat. That's all. Uh, no, he, he, come on, man. Come on. Oh, okay. Well, go over here bouncing around or whatever. It's more than positioning yourself in a the seat, then, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, since we I had talking points, here. Since it's I, not since, just chair Olympics. Since I was called out, I guess I will start. Um, we had a at our local GameStop here in Riverside. We had a um, Super Street Fighter Four AE arcade edition. Arcade, yeah, arcade edition. For those that don't know what AE means, uh, tournament at our GameStop and. Um, we took home second, third, and fourth. Not bad. I mean, that's a good job for you know our teammates, um, Chris Sensei, who hasn't lost a beat. And I was really shocked. I was really. You're shocked, really? Well, not more or less shocked, but more like you know seeing him in action after I want to say about a year or so. He ain't lost nothing, bro. No. <laughs> I just trained with him maybe two, three weeks before the tournament happened, and he was impressed with my play. Same guy that I beat that one time before that y'all heard about on the first episode. Yeah, same guy. He was at the tourney. And he's the person that got second place for DKO. Shouts out to Chris D. We appreciate that, man. But the DKO boys also got third and fourth place. Shout outs to them, man. That's a good mm-hmm. job. We might not have won, but we made a presence. Yeah, Uday got third. He's known as he did Blaze or Blaze as he was in the tournament. And Giff, I know he's rising. Or what do you call himself? Fail tier in the tournament? He was a yeah, he was fail tier. Yeah, in the tournament. tournament. Um, yeah, he got four. So yeah, rising his um gamer tag. Awesome work that I didn't place. I wasn't really taking myself seriously because, and it's not just because I haven't played this game in a long time. I just really didn't feel there are certain games with me that I can totally forsake for long, long times, and I'll get back on the stick and I'll pick everything up. In a heartbeat, AE is not really one of them. Like, I have to get every... Because it's all about... It's with the frames and the links with me. But it'll take time. It was still fun. Got to fight against some people I never fought. I haven't... I don't think I played anybody in the group, so... That's the one thing I wanted right there. I wanted to face people that didn't come with me. Because that's where I feel the experience comes from. Because I play... You know, I play, you know, Malcolm and you and... Yeah. I'll catch up with GIF sometime, but... All these, all these other people, I will never... It'll be a small chance of me running back into them. That's what I normally look for in a tournament. It's like socializing, but video games. Yeah. So would you say that this episode would be more geared towards tournament play and maybe the mindset and what you have to do to prepare for a tournament or the levels of mental and physical preparation that is involved when you go into such an environment? Take it there, for me. Yeah, that's fine with me too. I mean, well, not the entire episode, just a portion. But yeah. roll with it. But yeah, with me going into there and just now starting to get more tournament experience, it's really a big learning experience. Honestly, it's like doing what you do online, but instead, it's not. Um, it's not online, you know, you're playing people right there on the spot, so there's nothing, there's no boasting, no groaning about, ooh, like this, and connection, this, and 
for Xbox players. I don't have gold and blah, blah, blah. You know? And even with any time, like, win or lose, I feel like it's experience then. I mean, You're I always, always learning something. I always say, I always say to anybody, I don't care if you're brand new to a game. I don't care if you came to this tournament this past weekend. Small little tournament, still was a tournament. You can come to that tournament. You could have played AE for just four days. I don't care. Go to tournaments. If you want to get better, if you want to have fun playing other people, if you want to level up, like that one person I faced, the Adon player I faced, I forgot his name unfortunately, sorry if you're listening and you don't, and I didn't remember, sorry about that, I'll catch up with you, but he gave me a good match, I don't play that many Adons as a Rose player, and he really wanted, like he said, this was a personal goal, and it's like, if you want that, if you want to get high level good, you gotta get a high level beatdown. I'm or a high le- and a high level player to deliver that beatdown, so you can actually understand what is occurring in this match. And pretty much that's what that is. Like I'm not even being funny. If you want to get high level up and level up, you got to get a high level beatdown. You're not gonna get good squashing jobbers and for people who are not wrestling fans. I'm talking about beating people who are greener than you are over and over and over. You're not gonna get any better. In any case, you have to go into an environment where. There are players that are better than you and or equal because fighting people that are of a lower level than you is not going to give you any experience and not just experience, but I would more so say practical experience that you could use and that you could learn from. These players are using different elements, different tactics, different setups, different execution styles than you are used to. But at the same time, even though you might not know what is going on right now, you'll be able to run it back in your head and understand why you lost. Winning is not the entire objective. You have to understand why you lost in order to win. Yeah, and um, when my, my, my objective yesterday, it was win or lose for me. If I won, cool. If I didn't, cool. I was having a whole lot of fun. But my main objective was um, I, I was working in the lab Friday night, which is the night before the tournament, and I'll put together some combo setups, you know, just putting stuff together, see how, see, you know, see if I can come up with something, because I pretty much got, you know, deadly down, packed as everybody knows, but I just put my own little setups together, and then, you know, I tested them against the, um, the CPU, you know, CPU in the training room, and then Saturday, that's when I put my theory to the test, could I do that setup against another human player and to my surprise it worked I was able to actually execute that on command and that was all I was trying to accomplish yesterday I mean of course I was you know trying to shoot for a win too but it's not about that sometimes it's a learning experience like Lotus says but my main objectives was to make sure that my theory worked and it did so I'm actually proud of that myself so and the people I went up against were pretty good I actually went up against um false tier in the um, loser bracket, and he, I think he used Guile, didn't he? Against, he yeah. No, he used Cody against me. Yeah. Yeah, he used Cody. He was a um, pretty decent Cody player. And um, the guy placed before that, um name is Adam. Well, he doesn't have another name to go by. Come to find out, I've already known this guy for a while because he works at the Journeys over at the um, our new mall. And um, he, also cust- he also does customized arcade sticks, so, you know. Shouts out to Adam. Yeah, shouts out to Adam, definitely. He does some good work. He'll, he can customize all the way back to the old Nintendo arcade stick and, you know, have it work your way the way you need to. But um, that was my experience yesterday, and I'm, you know, quite proud about that. I learned a lot yesterday. And as soon as I got home, I did some more setups, and everything seems to be coming according to plan. So we'll okay. see what happens the next go around. Yeah, I'm hoping. That's good, right? There. I'm hoping that was the overall take of anybody who went there with us than anybody. Hope you learned something. Hope you had fun. And that is pretty It's much. all about having fun, man. Yeah, then. And also, we're not going to forget him. Shout outs to the person who won there then. Laswaga. I'm pretty sure he's native to Warner Robins. I know he's huge in the Warner Robins fighting scene. And he, shout outs to him, man. Yeah, you won. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. job, bro. Yeah, I spoke to him. He said, you know, come see us up there in Warner Robins. So we'll definitely. We'll, Definitely mm-hmm. look to that right there. So, a uh, big, big topic that kept floating around because it was um, Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition 2012. Yeah. Being that was the game, and then since it's in the near coming future, the big topic that kept coming up constantly and constantly when they saw a certain character then. 
Like, it such with, such, does it start with a D? No. No. Such and such, you know, talking about whatever character, oh my goodness, they're pretty good though, but wait till Ultra. Wait till Ultra. Oh, you're talking about buffs and nerfs. Well, no, just saying, you know, they were, one thing that kept coming up was, you know, what this character is going to be like in Ultra, because when I, just for fun of it, picked T-Hawk against this one other person who was pretty green, I didn't want to squash him, I mean, I was just having fun. They were talking about, you play T-Hawk? Like, were you kidding? I'm like, I actually do play Hawk. It wasn't a joke. It was like, you heard about his changes, right? And I'm like, yes, and I'm really excited about that. The foot speed, um, his Tomahawk Buster, all that stuff. I'm happy about that right there. I'm really happy about that. Because <laughs> the Blanca match was just, it's frustrating. Just yeah. frustrating. Man, that's why they call them bad matchups. Yeah. Well, Yes. But yes. but life is too short for bad matchups. But, yeah. So, what do y'all feel about Ultra right now? You know, right now with Ultra, I feel that one of the main missions that they were trying to accomplish was some of the characters in Super were undeniably lower tier than some other characters. Mm-hmm. This is a fact. Yeah. It's been a fact of the game since people have been playing it. This is nothing new. But I'm glad that Capcom did pay a little more attention to the characters that were lesser prepared for certain situations, and they gave them answers to those situations. Mm-hmm. I'm glad they addressed that issue, and they're doing a very good job and a very diligent job, in my opinion. A lot of people might not agree with me. I'm fine with that. Everybody is entitled to their opinion, but I think Capcom is actually doing a pretty good job of taking in public opinion when it comes to characters that are considered low to mid tier and trying to give them justifiable answers to characters that are considered high tier. Give them a fighting chance. Yes, give them a fighting yes. chance. Just Do not it. make it so hard if you just happen to pick this character versus this character, you have to work twice as hard to win the match. Well, in this version of the game, you might just have to work a little harder to win the match, but not as much as you would have to work in Super. A.E. Yeah, and the game's been flipped up. Well, not said flipped upside down to an extent, but also new features are in there. The whole red focus thing. Yeah, the red focus, the delay, ultra, wake, the delay ultra, wake up. Pickup, all that. All that right there is going to twist the game up. So it's not even really, I feel like, yeah, the what the changes of the characters are significant. They are. But, you know, there are actually some stuff in game that's also going to twist stuff up some too. Like people's wake up game and all of that. But... Before we jump off, like, do you agree with him? Do you get uh, West? Agree with him? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nothing agree. to add. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, you don't have to. You know what I mean, because I mean, no, I mean, I'm cool with the way things are going right now. It's just you know, so the, just certain characters I haven't really seen yet. So the whole guile, like, before we get into who we haven't seen yet, yeah, the guile thing. The pretty much the most controversial character as of right now, the latest build with the whole non auto correcting Ultra One, like. He does face. It, was, it did face. auto correct before. Well, I mean, like the latest build, though, it doesn't. He faces. Yes. He'll face that way, but it will not connect. It will not connect. And also, some people don't like the whole thing where he takes counter hit damage for his sonic bones. If I'm not mistaken, if that is correct. Not sure and myself. And his stamina dropped to 950. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Now, Dive Minion, best guy player in the world, was vocal about that, but he said he would like to pick another character if these current changes with Guile actually proceed into the final build of the game he said he'd actually pick a different character to play because it just would not be beneficial yeah but then um, I think it was May 6th I think it was the 6th of this month he was just like he tweeted I know he tweeted if you don't stand for anything or if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything and he's staying dedicated to Guile no matter what so I do hope they give them. I, I do hope they reverse some of those things. In, but I figure if they keep it, much like any person who is loyal, despite the fact the whole character loyalty term is, and if you with me, despite the fact it's been said of me sometimes, hey, he's gonna find out what he can do and what he can and can't do. That's the thing about game changes. It's not so much about what your character like. You know, oh, you're gonna lose some stuff. There's gonna be some stuff you can't do anymore. You gotta find new stuff. Like I said in the first episode, you gotta have stuff in your back pocket. And that's Dominion's main catchphrase. You don't nerf, you don't buff, you don't diminish the character. Even if they do, you adapt to what happens. You don't sit there and cry about it. You deliver an answer. 
Kevin Landon, you are pretty popular on this show because we have quoted you numerous times already. <laughs> I think it was this episode and this one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're talking about people you haven't seen before. While I know it's kind of dated, you haven't fully heard all of our replies, responses, reactions to it. So understand that because you're getting it now. So what do you think about DiCaprio? Cabaret, I think I think she's going to be a monster. In my opinion, uh, I saw the second build that they had where Combo Fiend and who was Hart, it? Ryan Hart. Ryan yeah, Hart. Ryan Hart when they were playing. And Ryan Hart was sitting there on stage like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. Why are these certain things occurring on the screen? And I am trying to do something about it, but it's not happening. But we also have to understand and take into consideration that Combo Fiend has been playing his character since his inception. And he knows what it can and cannot do against various characters. So he is very in-depth within that field of knowledge. And since he was introducing that field of knowledge to a new slew of players who have not seen that particular field of knowledge, of course, it can be granted that they were going to have a little bit of trouble versus his character. But at the same time, Ryan Hart did not lose every single match. To my knowledge, I might be incorrect on that. Don't quote me. I'll go back and do my research. You can drop it in the comments and let me know if I'm wrong. I'm fine with that. But it takes time to adjust to new elements in the game. And Ultra is a new game. Under Cap Ray, when she's going to be played, she's going to be extremely popular. Everybody's going to be playing her. There's going to be new setups, new mix-ups, new cross-ups, new everything that everybody is going to have to deal with and learn with. On a constant basis. Yeah, like, <clears throat> for instance, like, and I understand because I got the, I saw the reports afterwards. The DiCaprio we saw at final round, that's not the final bill for her. They did, they said they're going to tweak some stuff down to make sure she isn't too devastating. But and even they did. still, but even still, think about this though. This goes back to the whole pick a top tier thing because. Ryan Hart picked two of the most fearsome characters in the whole entire series from Vanilla Street Fighter to now. He had Vanilla Sagat, mm-hmm. and Vanilla Sagat got squashed practically. He had additional the, the initial A.E. Yun, who was considered the most top-tier, craziest character in the game then. And I think he got a couple in, but still, he, got, he still didn't get it. Yeah, he got beasted on, for the most part. So... I mean, I mean, it's it's a combination of not knowing this fresh new face debuting character, but I feel that also goes back to the whole thing about picking the top tier again. It's like it didn't work that time. I mean, and think about it, this is a fresh new face, but hey, fresh new faces, and in this case, maybe not totally fresh new, but think about those characters, like when um, Jin first started getting getting up there, and then people don't know too much about Gen from what it seemed. It was a fresh new yeah, character. Yeah, Zien let them know about him. Nobody paid attention to the character until this person started playing. When I first saw him, like, I've got to play some Jin players. Cause, I mean, not Jin, but some Gen players because I don't know crap about this character. Out of every single match I've had in AU Online, out of every time I've played somebody in this game, I have probably only run into two Gens, and both of them were online. And I really didn't get to see much of the character, so it didn't really help. But it's that it's that hidden face factor, as I say. The sleepers, I think Maximilian called them. The slept on characters. I consider them the real top tier. Because, like I said, he came out of nowhere and it's yeah. like, oh my god. He it's won, it's he, and he won Evo. It's Gin. It's he won Evo Gin. with Gin. It's Gin. Just came out of nowhere completely. But, Shocker. But yeah, four hour runoff on DiCaprio, Wolfman. I'm just interested in this um, backstory about the Capra. Backstory. Backstory. Yeah. Good, good. So you don't know too much about the backstory of Capra. All I know is um, she's Russian from what I've learned so far. Well, she was part of the, the cloning project with Bison. Okay. If, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, she's one of the dolls. Yes, one of the dolls. And I haven't done too much research on her myself, but from what I will infer by the information that I have researched... She was one of the more perfected cami dolls from M. Bison's cloning project. And based on that, and guessing this is adding on to a, 
official Street Fighter lore. Do not quote me on that because I'm not sure if all of this information that I am presenting to you is true. But just from my own inferences, this was one of his most deadliest weapons. And if I was Bison, I would hold back one of my best until the proper time to release her. I mean, I'm guessing a la Capcom and the entire conspiracy on the last character that was going to be released, which Yoshinori Ono did an excellent job of completely concealing like the entire propaganda behind his character was absolutely brilliant yeah and also with that last little bit of piece of information you brought up you said he would release his deadliest weapon when it came time you think that is what you think that's what was going on it came to the reveal trailer when you saw it like when they all gathered up before bison and then it's your time to go now go now i would say yes yeah, could just be. in just in my opinion it very well could be. Since you mentioned the whole controversy about the whole thing, I'll go ahead and ramble about the camp, right? All right. <clears throat> the cami clone issue here. People don't seem to like it. A few people. The not only, everybody. The only thing I will give the people who didn't like the character is this. There are numerous. I forgot exactly how many dolls. I would think they're 12 because they represent the months. Of the year? I think there are 12 of them. Why did they have to pick the one that looks like Cammy? Because, oh my <laughs> gosh, before the character even moved, that's what everybody said. Oh my god, it's Cammy with the mask. And before I go any further, remember what um, Gift told us yesterday? He thinks um, in the comics there's something that possibly suggests yeah, that I remember that. DiCapri may be Cammy as an alter ego. Despite the fact that the burned face and everything. Like, I don't think that's accurate. Like a split personality type of cami? It's possible. It's possible. I mean, it's possible. I don't think so, but it's possible. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what he's insinuating. Cami's dark side, I guess. Yeah. If you would allow that. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. But either. hey, you can, I mean, there's some proof there to suggest it is. I mean, because I would think that, you know, DiCaprio is her own person. She's a clone, first of all. And she's so. from Russia, supposedly. But you know, it could all be a guy's. But, yeah, aesthetically looking at the character, yeah, it's Cammy with the mask. But the moves are totally Nothing. different. Totally different. They're totally different. Nothing and like Cammy. There's no cannon spike then. The dive kick is very crazy. Oh, the dive kick is nasty. I yeah. love that dive kick. I mean, anything, just putting it in a nutshell, because I did a rant about this when the character first came out, just to let off steam. I felt this character, DiCaprio, I felt like she would appeal more to Dawson and Vega players, if anything. I say Dawson because of that Fireball Ultra that is just like Dawson's, except it moves slower. Has more I, mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's like that, but okay, that's, that's just the Ultra. I mean, what about the character's normals and the other things that she can cancel into? I would say she's more so akin to a player like Vega. I mean, I was saying like Dawson because like she also has teleport, so she can kind of emulate some of the same mix-up he has. With your catastrophe and think he can teleport. True. Okay. She's faster on people. She's not, she's not gonna s- slow down. Like, and then he can get counter. Like, it's nothing like that. But, and think about it, it's a bigger fireball. It takes more hits. Because think about it, you saw Ryan Hart as eight, um, not eight, that vanilla Sagat throw two tiger shots at it, then it, it did nothing. Stayed there, stayed there, took a mix up, and death. I'm not sure if he got cheesed or if it was an actual. I'm pretty pitch. sure if that's the case, then that orb just has. Infinite durability while it's on the screen. Nine hits, nine hits. I think. Well, nine hits. Okay. Well, how many t- how many hits does a regular tiger shot do? Two. And if you're gonna do two, which is what you said he did, then two tiger shots. All right. So that's still seven hits where that orb can't do nothing. Even an ex tiger shot wouldn't have gotten through it with those other two hits on top of it. Well, if you want to get through that, which probably been a waste, then you have to burn your entire meter. So it but wouldn't be wouldn't, worth anything. Wouldn't worth anything, honestly. <laughs> honestly, what you should do right then is just go into a defensive state and watch out for mix-ups and cross-ups until that orb vanishes from the screen. I mean, block your reward if you can. I mean, I'm if not you sure, can, I'm not sure how much chip damage that uh, thing will do now in its latest build, but it looks like a fearsome ultra. Then it looks really fearsome. It looks amazing, really. It's really, it looks really amazing. It does. <laughs> I like it a lot myself. I'm not going to lie. It is freaking crazy, but I don't know if I'm going to main her. I'll try her out. It'll be just like any other character. I mean, how, yeah. however she feels when I try her out will determine how far I go. That's the same thing. That's what any new character they introduce. Just like when they introduce the new characters to Marvel, people try them out like, you know, Iron Fist. 
you know, people of that nature. People had to try them out, see what they were about, what they could do with them, what situations would be viable for me to use this character. Is this character viable in more situations versus not viable in other situations? And they weighed those options and they adjusted their play style to compensate for those options. And the whole look, 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 because I know some of you listening may have heard the first episode where it was pretty much centered around stuff people complain about. None of us here have any problem with anybody critiquing anything. It's what it's all about. It's we want you just, guys to ask questions. No, it's not just the show. I'm talking about with the whole DiCaprio thing. Then. I'm oh. saying in general. I don't have problems with anything. I don't have problems with anybody talking about anything, like being critical and all of that. I have no problem with that. The whining and the complaining and the moaning has got a freaking... It was just... People judge this character before they even pick the character up. Before you don't have even. a right to say anything about that character unless you are at final round where some people actually got a chance to try the character after the reveal and the, the, um, the streams and everything shut down. Or unless you're in Japan and there are arcades where they released the game at first that was a build that they actually released to the entire public to play. You really have no right to say anything about the character because you don't know anything. I mean, and that's just the truth. Exactly, and it's it's just the it's like this is becoming a phase with the FGC when it comes to character. Well, I don't know, like it's just the you know the comment sections of SRK and all this stuff, but blah. You gotta give like I'm not saying Capcom is invulnerable to criticism. I'm not saying they don't make mistakes. I'm not saying they never made me mad with anything. But it happens. You got to give stuff a fair chance before you judge it. I mean, it's only fair, really, because it's just merely, in any other case, it's prejudging. And you don't want to be prejudged about anything. You might not care, but is it fair? Hey, <laughs> that rhymes. But seriously, it's like the outpour for that character, the negative energy was just silly. It's just, it was just stupid and people want to talk about oh my gosh and Capcom hyped it up they hyped it up and they gave us this garbage okay who really hyped it up did they hype it up or did you guys hype it up did they give you something that they just released to the public and then said do what you will with it because the most ridiculous thing about that whole segment why were people mad when Retsu and Rainbow Mika, when they showed up in the trailer, why were they so mad when it, when it was revealed, neither one of them were the character? Probably because people just wanted to play with those characters in the new build of the game. And then Capcom just decided of their own volition that they did not want those characters in the game. And they can do that because they make it. That's their job. Okay. People they're... don't complain about you with the job that you do. They might, but what good is it going to do? Okay, if that was your reason, if for anybody who was just upset for that similar reason, then I got something to tell you. Pay closer attention. You who all have been getting hyped about this character, have probably known it for a long time now, they gave us hints on what this character was going to be. We knew what this character was going to be. It was going to be somebody who is relevant to the Street Fighter universe that has never been playable. It was going to be female as well. Rainbow Mika was playable at one time. Not going to be the oh, character. And didn't Yoshinori Ono say that only five people on the internet actually guessed out of all the yes. millions of people, yes. billions of people yes. that then, have access to the internet, yeah. only five people actually guessed correct yeah. on this planet yes. who that character was going to be. Exactly. And then Retsu. Retsu is a guy. He wasn't going to be the character. See, that right there was kind of poor on Capcom's part. It's like, those were very terrible teases because we see, we see Rainbow Mika, oh my god, wait a minute, no, you were playable in Alpha 3, you're not going to be in it, and Retsu, you were a guy, you're not going to be in it, and who's it going to be? And people are talking about, ugh, Capcom throwing curveballs, no, not this time. You got, you took the mix up, and you fell for it. Yeah, fell for it. You fell for the setup. Like, I'm not saying DiCaprio is bad. When she got revealed out of 10, I gave her a 5 because only half of her was appealing to me, and that was the moves. I mean, aesthetically, yeah, it's a, it looks like Cammy with a mask, but, you know, and I, 
And I don't like the design that much, but the, the moves, the character looks nice. So I gave her a five. Five. Out of ten. Out of ten. And five is good in our circle, so in case you didn't know. Yeah. If you get, if you get a five, it might as well be a ten. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, how would y'all like rate um, DiCaprio number-based? far as like overall care not just design but just every, like every everything every aspect right everything. now that we've been revealed yeah, cumulative if you will mm. right now just because I haven't touched her just from what I've seen I give her a strong 7 a very strong 7 yeah, that, was pre- that was pretty much my um my number rounding too it was probably gonna be like a 7 for me based on what I've only seen so until I get my hands on her, I'll give you... Next time, if I get my hands on her, I'll give you even more accurate, you know, reading. The number might rise, the number might fall. It might stay the same. But until you can actually play the character and get your hands on them, I feel that it's not fair to pass judgment. Yeah. Yet. I Yet. Mean, just, and like, be patient. Just be patient with it. You never know... What's going to happen? I don't mind people having opinions. Nobody does. I got them. Everybody's got an opinion, but... Be, edgy, just be, edgy. Pa- be patient, man. Just but be patient. Just, fighters have become so impatient with everything now. They want everything as soon as the game I mean, comes a, out. That, it's a lot of other fandoms, but yeah, it's here too. It's here. It's now, so They want everything now. I want what I want. Screw what everybody else wants. If you don't give me what I want for my character right now, as soon as the game is released, then we instantly have a problem. Well, I'm going to tell you something right there. If that's For any of you that feel like that right there, I want you to go on YouTube, look up the Rolling Stones, and look up a song, so, look up a song called You Can't Always Get What You Want. I am not... Go kidding. ahead. I'm go ahead. Kidding. We'll wait. YouTube it now. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. I, we'll wait. It's, we're, we're not going nowhere. I'm no. not going anywhere. I'm, like, I'm not even being funny. It's just... Because I've been upset about stuff, but do I rant about it? I might write a little post about it and that's it, but that's it. That's just about it. You know, that's it. I don't, you know, it's not worth, because think about it. Capcom can deep push anything they want to at this time. Come on. And if you don't like it, don't put money toward it. If they don't get bucked, if they don't get bucked, they don't continue. You don't have to buy it. And I don't see why people get mad when people spend their money, their hard on money on the things that they want. Do people criticize you about what you spend your money on? Okay, if they do or if they don't, what does it matter to you? Did they help you make your money? Do they pay your bills? Do they spend their money on your video game systems and the games that you need to utilize on that system? No. So why do you care what they say? Why? Really? Why? People are going to have different tastes, different opinions. People aren't going to like all the same things. Some stuff is going to be more popular than others because people just like it. I mean... Everybody knows popularity is not equal equal to, you know, quantity or how good something is. It's just how, how many people reach it. Whether it's clever marketing, whether it's actually really freaking good, or whether it's just sweet on the eyes, the ears, the senses. It's just Everybody has their own opinions. And we ain't knocking nobody on what you like. Like, never, never get that thought in your head that just because we might not particularly agree with your opinion doesn't mean that we're trying to knock it. You are entitled to your opinion. I mean, like I said before, post your opinion in the comments. Half of the time, we're liable to agree with you. Or if you just have an actual intelligent response to anything that we say, we're not going to dismiss anything. We are completely open to opinions. So feel free. You know, just because we say something you don't agree with, you don't have to bash. Give an intelligent response that identifies your reason for not agreeing with us and we'll give you an intelligent response back this is not meant to be an internet battle this is an intelligent discussion about what you the fans people that love fighting games the fgc the entire community we are here for you guys we are here to understand and give feedback and commentary on things that are going on with the people for the people by the people and we're not and we're not a cult either all right, we got to get this cult mentality out of the FGC then because honestly, I was pretty upset when that whole thing about someone saying Max was killing the FGC came out. Oh, that was nonsense. I mean, just because the guy happens to have an audience that seems to be probably 75 plus percent casuals, look, okay. What's the problem with that? All right, look, here's the harsh truth for some of you then. Or at least for um, in perspective, and more than likely this is the case. The fighting game community is 
It was a decent size. Mm-hmm. But think about it. All these games that are selling in the millions and millions and millions, or at least selling really well then, you're telling me casuals aren't buying those games too? They're just as much a part of the community as hardcores are. And they probably actually have more fun than the hardcore players do because they play strictly for fun. Just because they like fighting games. They don't look when they lose, it's not the end of the world. They're not breaking anything. Sorry I have to do that again, but it's hey, just, I it's, mean, stuff or, just, or they don't set controllers on fire and throw them across the yard. When a jab at you, but you know. I mean, it, hey, I mean, it, I mean, it happened. I'm just saying. Stuff happens, but we're just really trying to. Same for Kelly. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, when he broke his arcade <laughs> stick. Oh wow. I saw that. And that I, was crazy. I saw that. I was actually shocked. I was like, oh wow. I've never actually seen him react like that I'm after like, a match. That like, surprised me as well. Because he's usually a very well-collected player. Like I said the same thing about him. He was probably a freaking a psychedelic rocker in a past life, man. Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix. Yeah, what destroying their... <laughs> See, but Jimmy Hendrix man look cool, though. I mean, I don't think anybody's like going to slam an arcade stick. Well, okay, actually, I can see somebody slamming an arcade stick on the stage because the arcade stick, a good one, can run you about 200. A, g- a good guitar can run you up into the thousands. So, like, I, oh, can, I, yes. can, so I can buy like 10 arcade sticks for the price of a really good guitar. Yeah. And he probably got like 20 more in his garage at the house. So he, he probably wasn't worried about it. And that whole Colgate meme thing was just kind of flat with me. It's like, why didn't y'all freaking play the clip of him doing it and then play Threw It On The Ground over the record? That's what they should have done. That's what they should have did. They should have played Threw It On The Ground over the record. That's what they should have did. That's exactly what they should have done. But I don't need your hand. That, that. <laughs> but back to point A, we're... Let's be more open to newer players. And if somebody's inexperienced, you know, help them out some if they want it then. They're soon going to need to get better somehow. Because think about it. People in the community right now, most of them are not going to be 45, 50 years old still playing competitively. Most of them are probably like Seth Killian making the games. There or you doing go. something else. There you go. Jen, the game player, doesn't even want to really be a competitive gamer for a living for so long anymore. He's just good. I mean, he just likes being good. He just wants to teach people how to play the game. And he is happy with that. Sometimes you have to be a sensei in this community. You're not meant to be in the public light. Some people just aren't meant to do that. And for various reasons, I find myself sometimes fulfilling that position. Not just even on the sticks, but even when it comes to the mentality of being a fighter. Sometimes you need guidance in what is the point of fighting, the point of being a fighter. What do you fight for? The art. The art of fighting. You know, is it just for winning? Is it to gain knowledge? Whatever. But just don't just don't fight the cause of stir or to be a salt pie, like I said in the first mm-hmm. episode. Just don't fight to be a salt pie. You lose, you get so mad that bruh, everybody sucks besides me. No. Bruh. And I know we bring this up a whole bunch. We're not going to be preachy about it. It's just that we keep seeing this and it's just things like these will, it puts a bad look on the community. On the whole it community. It will scare away newer players sometimes and people mm-hmm. who really play for fun. Ain't no it's just, sometimes it's it just, does. It's something that we all strongly feel about and we just we just really wish the community just would like flush that out. It's like, and I'm putting it in thesis here and I'll be done with this subject. It's like Max ended his video talking about him possibly killing the FGC. We are people playing video games. It's not a cult. It's not a gang. It's not a fraternity. It's none of this stupid initiation. You're not rich enough. You're not poor enough. You're not skilled enough. You're not gamer enough. You're not hip enough. It's none of that. We're just playing video games. Let's leave it at that. It's all it is. It's all it is. We're having a good time. It's brotherhood. It's family. Brotherhood, sisterhood. Yes. No, no, we can't leave but our sisters. We got some big sister players. Mutant hood, everything. Alien hood. Our partners out in space where they're playing video games or whatever. They're probably playing Marvel vs. Capcom like year 25. Mango hood. Mango hood. But (laughs) at the same time, guys, what we would like you to do. If there's anything that you would like to comment on 
in the comment section for this video drop a line we are more than welcome to your opinions or questions or suggestions for further episodes please feel free to give us some topics that you're concerned about within the FGC no matter what it'll be and we will speak on it this is what we do we do this for the community we do this for you guys if we did this for ourselves we wouldn't have a purpose we just do it to listen to ourselves talk we do this for y'all so we would like y'all support when it comes to these talks about the FGC because without you guys there is no FGC and we love y'all to the bottom of our pits of our cores of our hearts and of our minds and beings and fingertips on those sticks yeah and that's not just for the people who are already skilled the people we idolize that's newer players too who look at what we do and all, like see the amazement and all the art and appreciate it and you want to be part of it that's for y'all too we want to welcome you there if you have, but yeah. And hey, the more questions you send us, then we might dedicate a whole section of the show. Just to, just to, to your questions. Your questions. Your just questions. to your questions. I'd really, we. We would, love it. We would, we would love, love to do oh, that. Yes. We would love to do that. I'm itching for that. But yeah, this is going to be a relatively short episode. Everybody here is itching to play something. We got. Uh, we're about to get on some AE, some Street Fighter 2012 AE. AE. I've we're, been called out. So. Oh yes, I, the Sliggin Hawk has called out the Curly Wolf Man, and we're gonna have some Sagat versus uh, versus Dudley matches for y'all very soon that we're gonna put up on the show so y'all can actually see us talk our walk. So we're talking the walk and and, our, and and the walking and talking, talking or the walking and talking. talking. talking and what are we talking about? We're already talking. There's footage on there too. There. Walk this way. There's more. There's walk more. This way. There is more on the channel than just the podcast. Check out not just the there's not just the show. Like the the show and everything, it's nice. But check out the other footage. Then from matches from the past to now, new footage. We're always going to have new footage. Stay tuned to the Slick and Hawk on YouTube as well as Double Ko on YouTube, and watch out for Wandering Blue Lotus as his channel as well because he's going to have some new videos popping up on there. And Links will be dropped in the description, so we'll direct you in the right direction. And we do other stuff other than fighting games. If you like other, you know, things or whatnot, pick up with us then. We got musicians. Or ask us if you want us to talk about a certain fighting game or any game. It doesn't matter. We tackle all genres. This is not just specific to fighting games. Just because them fighting words, you can fight in other games besides fighting games. Exactly, Mundo. But we're going to close it out right here, folks. Thanks again for listening. Hey, sorry the show was short then. You know, time constraints and all that good stuff, but we're still bringing content to you then. If you want to see more, like I said, drop comments. We're more than welcome and we're more than happy to do a whole... It could be even a whole show dedicated to questions. Not just a second. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but you have to make sure you like, rate, subscribe, and share. Because we're going to need those things to help, move, to help move the fighting game community as a whole. We need your help. We can't do this by ourselves. Yeah, thanks again for listening. Um, shout outs to Parker and Anime Atlanta for giving us the push there. Thanks and giving us some very good advice. We love you, Parker. Yeah, yes, awesomeness. Keep up what you're doing. Keep up all of what you're doing. All that you love then. From this May 11th episode of DKO's Dim's Fighting Woods. I'm Chris Lotus. I'm DKO the Slickin' Hawk Scar. And Keo, the curly wolf man. Grr. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Moon's coming out. I guess he's transforming. Thanks for, yeah. Yeah, that's the tea. <laughs> Thanks for right, listening. Folks. Thanks for listening. We'll catch y'all next week. Keep fighting. Stay strong. We out.